On an afternoon at Donghai University in Building A, several different groups of students were sitting in a classroom that was somewhat similar to an amphitheater made of light wood. Then afterwards, a man named Lin Mu with a short dark haircut and wearing a white suit with a blue shirt seemed to be taking some kind of test or solving some problems. However, he felt that it was very difficult for him. Then, in the corner of the room, a black-haired girl accompanied by her friend with a different hair color was looking at Lin Mu. Then there was a girl with long black hair named Du Xiao Yue, who was wearing a black dress with a white collar. Then next to her was a purple-haired girl in a dress with ruffles and a jacket. Then after that, seeing the girls, the men who were looking quickly started to discuss them. They thought she was so cute and pretty, no wonder she was considered the queen of the campus. The men didn't understand at all why such a beautiful girl entered their university, and didn't she come from one of the several theater schools? Then afterwards, one of the guys was surprised that most likely the girl didn't want to be an actress. But it is known that this is a second-year class. However, what was she doing here? At that moment, she stared intently at Lin Mu. The red-haired girl chuckled and asked her friend that she was engaged to him. According to the red-haired woman, the man looked very boring. Whereupon Du Xiao Yue said that she would rather live alone than have to marry this boring man. Then her red-haired friend immediately headed towards Lin Mu's table while snapping her palms on the table. Then, at that moment, the girl tried to attract the man's attention. She smiled slightly and said that she and her friends wanted to sit here and then asked Lin Mu to move. He sighed and said that there were many empty tables in the back, so the girl could sit there. The red-haired woman looked sharply at the young man. Then she looked at the notebook with the assignment Lin Mu was completing. She started to tell him that since he couldn't complete such a simple assignment, how dare he occupy the first table? The girl decided to give him a little advice which that Lin Mu should go to the back table. Then he carefully covered the task with his finger so that she would not see it. But then Lin Mu gave this woman an unhappy glance. He only expressed indifference. Then a hand slapped his shoulder from behind. And Lin Mu turned the man from the second table around and told him that a beautiful girl asked Lin Mu to move. So he should hurry up and move. And after that, he gradually packed his belongings into a leather bag and left the place. And when he walked past her, she gave him a look in which it seemed to show a displeased expression and then told him to be quiet. Then after that, she called him a coward. And the red-haired girl raised her hand and smiled slightly, saying that she didn't believe at all that someone like Lin Mu could get into Donghai University. She thought that he probably had some connections so that he could get into the university. Then at that moment, Du Xiao Yue smiled softly and said that as long as she could break the engagement, she didn't care about the school he got into. Then after that, at night, Lin Mu stood at the bus stop thinking that he was thinking about Du Xiao Yue's previous words, stating that he was a coward. But after that, he clenched his fist and declared what he did, thus deserving such a wish for himself. It is known that the engagement was arranged by the man's parents and is not at all to blame for this. Then the man looked down and thought that he should go home and visit his grandfather. The young man hoped that the old man was much better than before. And after that, Lin Mu took a taxi, and some time later he finally arrived home. Then after that, at the Lin family home. He then immediately knocked on the door and shouted to tell his grandfather that he had returned home. He almost touched the door and then he heard some voices where his family arguing about something. The man thought about it and made a very sad expression on his face. Then he went inside and saw that all the relatives had already gathered inside his house. Then an adult woman with shoulder-length gray hair smiled faintly and congratulated Lin Mu on his return. Then she said that his grandfather had gone to the hospital for a checkup and would be returning to the mansion soon. The woman was Aunt Lin. The man cast his calm, green-eyed gaze in Aunt Lin's wrong direction and said that he would go to her room and wait. The man's grandfather walked past two senior men, a man with black hair combed back with old-fashioned glasses. He was wearing a classic two-piece suit with a dark blue tie and white shirt 
and his hand held a cup of tea. Then a man frowned at the bridge of his nose and said that Lin Mu was not polite at all because he didn't even greet his family. Lin's second uncle had the same bright green eyes as Lin Mu. His long hair was also slicked back with hair gel. The second uncle wore a neat beard. He was wearing a gray three-piece suit, but it turned out that the man took off his jacket. He was also wearing a white shirt and black tie. But when he frowned and said that he shouldn't take care of Lin Mu like that, he lowered his voice and whispered that the man didn't have much time left. During lunch, the grandfather of Lin's family also returned home. The old man was already walking badly, so he moved on the chair. He was wearing brown pants and a yellow shirt and hat. Lin Mu knelt in front of the old man and told him that from the day after tomorrow, Lin Mu would not have class for a few days. Therefore, the man promised to take good care of his grandfather. The old man looked at his grandson and agreed. Lin Mu lowered his gaze and said that since his mother and father died, grandfather had been in such a state. And in any case, the Lin family didn't even know if Grandpa Lin would be better than before. Then Auntie came and called the man over for dinner. Then after that, it was discovered that every week, she brought Grandpa to the table. At the table, everyone sat as usual. Grandpa Lin sat in the center. On his right hand sat Aunt Lin. And afterwards, it was seen that he was holding a bamboo stick in his hand and attracted the attention of the whole family. He said that they would soon hold an auction and Uncle Eddie was not there yet to receive certain powers to make decisions about the organization. He also reported that he was having some problems with it softly. I believe that the time has come when he should head the auction department. When Ify smiled wickedly and said that because of that I had problems with the auction arrangements, he shouldn't do it if offering his help to his elder brother, because he was sure that he would do everything perfectly when Mu loudly put the chopsticks on the table. He got up and said that he had eaten enough and was going to his room. Lenyata became angry. What if wanted the auction house the way Lin Yidai had invested so much in it? Why should he give it to his younger brother? Did he do anything for the auction house that Lin Yifi asked his older brother if he really wanted the auction house? According to Lin Yifi, that I should be happy that he already has a few acres of land I think it's worth sending from heaven to earth. Lin Mu walked out onto the balcony, sighing heavily. His face only revealed the young man's sadness, only thinking that his parents had gone to heaven too soon. The man slammed his fist on the balcony railing. Couldn't his parents see how Lin's family had quickly disintegrated? The man tensed, then he heard a voice behind him turn around. Then afterwards, Lin Mu saw Uncle Yifi smiling gently in front of him. He asked the man if he really missed his parents again. Lin pondered heavily and asked his uncle that he needed him for some reason. Now he said that it seemed like he didn't have the man. Ate too little at dinner, so he decided to check it out. Lin Mu hesitantly thanked his uncle and assured him that he was fine. Lin Mu's father was after all only Lin Mu's father who could inherit Lin's grandfather's skills. But unfortunately, Lin Mu's father was too fixated on work and spent all his time studying antiques and historical artifacts. However, Lin's family is very big, and Grandpa is a man of tradition uncle, if said that Grandpa insisted that Lin's father be his successor, and lead the family business, yet the family continued to lose money, even when Lin's father took over. Then Uncle Ify sighed and patted Lin's back, saying that they shouldn't talk about it. He just wanted to say that people shouldn't get what they can't handle. Otherwise, it would be a total mess. Lin Mu turned his gaze to his uncle. Then afterwards, he asked what it meant. However, he suddenly pushed him and the man flew down from the balcony. Lin Mu watched in horror. As he fell landing on the ground face down, a pool of blood began to form under the fallen man dead with almost no chance of survival. Lin Yifi sternly looked at the bloody body lying on the lawn. I smiled slightly and said that it was a small gift from him to Lin Mu. He wanted Lin Mu to reunite with his parents. A few moments later, there were cries throughout the house that Lin Mu had fallen from the balcony. Then after that, in a doctor's office. There was a red-haired girl, apparently a doctor, sitting at her desk and typing something on the computer. She was wearing a black gown with a gold chain around her neck, which ended in a large blue gem and on it. 
She was throwing a line of doctors when suddenly a nurse in a turquoise suit ran into her office, shouting that they had a patient who fell from the balcony. Therefore, the head doctor was looking for Dr. Ju. Dr. Ju glanced calmly with her blue eyes at the worried nurse with beads of sweat on her forehead and said that she would come to the operating room now. In the emergency department, about five doctors are working to save Lin Mu's life. They are all wearing turquoise blue robes suitable for surgery. The surgeon keeps his hands up. Because until the other assistants have prepared everything, he must not touch anything from the point of view of Lin Mu's sterility on the operating table and does not move his blue shirt and white pants are stained with blood, his hands are bruised. His body was full of bruises and scratches, and his face was badly damaged. Velcro straps were attached to his chest, showing his heart rate, pulse, temperature, blood pressure, and other indicators that were important for the operation. Dr. Ju, with red hair, put a white mask on her face and walked to the operating table. She asked a group of doctors about the patient's condition. The head doctor was very serious. He looked sharply at the girl and said that the patient fell from the fourth floor. After receiving a lot of internal bleeding, this doctor also noticed that Dr. Ju was very talented in acupuncture. He asked the girl if he could save the patient. The doctor knitted his eyebrows to the bridge of his nose, revealing seriousness and even a certain degree of severity. He said that there was one possible way to save this man, but it was very risky. The doctor took a calmer view and said he understood all the risks, but now they had to save this patient. Then the girl agreed and began to select the appropriate needles. She inserted two needles on both sides into Lin Mu's temporal area, then two on both sides higher closer to the crown of the head, and one needle in the middle of the forehead. A few seconds later, the nurse monitoring the patient's indicator panel reported that the patient Lin Mu's condition had finally stabilized. The surgeon's eyes widened in surprise. Did it really work to see a face full of surprise? Red-haired Dr. Ju explained that with the help of the needles, he stimulated the head or ran away live. If this goes on for a long time, this man's brain will die. Dr. Ju said that he handed over the rest to the team of doctors from the surgeon's operating room, and the chief doctor simultaneously ordered his help to start performing the operation as soon as possible. Then afterwards, the nurse standing at the panel with the indicator reported that the patient's pulse was elevated above normal. The surgeon wrinkled his nose and stared intently at the operating table, cursing. Did it really not work? She ordered the defibrillator to be set up. Another doctor took the defibrillator and charged it to 200 volts. This was the discharge he leaned against Lin Mu's body. She jerked reflexively, but it didn't help him at all. The doctor tried charging 300 volts also in vain. Zero pulse, the surgeon bowed his head and told his team that the patient had lost the sign of life. Lastly, the operation failed. The red-haired Dr. Ju took off his mask, told them to make sure to inform the patient's keeper about this. The nurse nodded and then covered the patient's body. The lifeless Lin Mu with a soft blue cloth which made the doctors upset cleaned everything up. After the operation and leaving the operating room, they left Lin Mu there. All the devices were turned off, but it reflected some kind of blue light. A black and comprehensible spot was spinning above this young man's body. What could it be? The deep, dark spot, like a black hole, started spinning harder, creating a strong airflow in the operating room. Then after that, while he was lying down suddenly, a black stream swirled above his body. The base sheet flew from Lin Mu's cold body. The bluish, glowing energy gradually flew into the man's muscular chest, which had penetrated into the blue, glowing energy, leaving only a sparkling purple smoke. But after a few seconds of glowing blue, a huge fist emerged from Lin Mu's motionless, cold body, grabbing the sparkling purple energy smoke. Due to the fact that the fist was holding the smoke, the man gradually started to rise from the operating table. He was practically already hovering above it. The purple energy was so powerful that it was able to lift the young man off the ground. The rather dense black energy started to fuse with the pale hand. Then, after that, the young man covered her almost completely. The energy began to slowly penetrate inside, leaving a medium-sized bronze ring on the index finger.
So the man floated unconscious for some time while the energy continued to fuse with her. The next morning, red-haired Dr. Ju was standing by the door in the hospital corridor. Her eyes were closed due to lack of sleep and her condition was sleepy today. She was also wearing a black dress with a small neckline in the cleavage area. But already turquoise shoes with small heels and a black necklace around her neck, instead of the pendant on top of this outfit, of course, was the doctor's line. Hearing a heart-wrenching scream, Dr. Ju opened her eyes slightly after looking around. She immediately ran towards the scream. After that, by entering the operating room. Dr. Ju saw two frightened nurses in turquoise gowns just below their knees through loud cries saying that they did not understand at all what was happening, and the girl was very scared. The red-haired Dr. Ju looked at Lin Mu's body with a serious look. Her blue eyes burned into his eyes, and the girl's eyebrows were drawn to the bridge of her nose. The nurses moved away, trying to calm each other down. Dr. Ju looked at the body and motionless patient. Lin Mu became taller and longer. It grew overnight. But how was it possible to contemplate the strangeness of the phenomenon? Dr. Ju touched Lin Mu's body with his hand. Then she opened her mouth in shock. A drop of sweat started dripping down her face. Patient Lin Mu warm. The girl stopped in shock. How could a corpse not cool down overnight? What happened? Anyway, Dr. Ju put her finger on patient Lin Mu's nose. He didn't even move from the girl's touch. But suddenly a moment later, he opened his bright green eyes and resolutely looked at the world around him. The patient woke up red-haired Dr. Ju was shocked by what happened. The nurses opened their eyes in horror and started shouting something about zombies coming for the girl and would eat them quietly. The doctor suggested that Lin Mu patient might have experienced clinical death. They were embarrassed, and with embarrassed shame bowed their heads apologizing to the doctor who had risen from the deadline. Then, afterwards, calmly sat down on the operating table, and after examining, the red-haired Dr. Ju in a white doctor's coat and two cute black-haired nurses in turquoise clothes asked the group of medical workers who they were. But after that, Dr. Ju looked at him in surprise. Lin Mu continued the interrogation. He looked around and asked where he was now. Benny stopped for a few seconds, looking at her crumpled, unbuttoned blue shirt and crumpled white pants with drops of blood after examining her body. Lin Mu asked the girl who he was. Then after that, Lin Mu was transferred to the intensive care unit at number 303, where three more people were supposed to stay with him. The room was quite spacious with its interior being light shades with dark sea green tile flooring, and the windows were large enough to allow light to penetrate well into it, which helped patients recover faster. Lin Mu was lying on the bed on a turquoise hospital pillow, covered with a turquoise blanket up to his neck. His head was bandaged in an acupuncture holder. Lin Mu's vital signs panel was quietly beeping, which explained his stable condition. Dr. Ju folded her hands in front of her and looked at the man carefully thinking. She was very serious. His body was tense like a rope the red-haired girl was thinking. Is it possible that the needle Dr. Ju inserted into her head yesterday damaged the point in his body responsible for memory? Lin Mu grunted most likely in pain. Dr. Ju wondered if the damage could be so severe that the young man had even forgotten his own name. The red-haired girl put her right hand on her hip and tried to say in the most confident voice of all, that Lin Mu, the patient, has nothing to worry about because the doctor believes that his memory will return soon. Dr. Benju tells him that she has a few other things that he needs to finish soon, but she promises to definitely come back. She also explains to the patient that if the man needs anything, he can press the button by the bed and a nurse will come to him. While the man is looking at the gray remote control with the red button, your doctor says goodbye to him and tells him to rest. Lin Mu lay for a while with his eyes closed. Then he suddenly opened them, looking around in frustration. He realized that he didn't feel any kind of spiritual at all in this place. The young man didn't understand where he was. At all, he tried to stand up. But he couldn't hear. A body attack not weaker, Lin Mu looked at his hands, thinking that he had used the last bit of Kai's spiritual to escape and create a new body for himself. Otherwise, he would have died. The man laughed and smiled in frustration he would never have thought. 
that he was the greatest cultivator in the world would end up like this. Then the man opened his bright green eyes filled with anger and revenge, waiting for Lin Mu to return to the cultivation world, and he would kill every one of them. There was a real commotion in the Lin mansion because of the sudden death. Lin Mu and Lin Yifei awakening were yelling at people on the phone. In anger that these people had absolutely no idea how to do their job, they had told him that his nephew Lin Mu was dead. How could such a thing happen that this person turned out to be the most alive of all the living? The man shouted in horror that God knew what was happening in the hospital. On the phone, Lin Yifa was told in a combo voice that the patient Lin Mu, though alive, did not remember anything at all. He opened his mouth in shock. After a moment of silence, he told his people to take good care of his niece and said that money would not be a problem in his treatment. After finishing the conversation, Lin Yifi sat in shock and did not move her younger sister. However, Lin Yifi, who is Lin Mu's aunt, started asking her brother about what happened, what happened there. Didn't the doctors say the person was dead? How could he have survived under such circumstances? Lin Yifi gritted her teeth and said he knew nothing about how it could have happened like this. Then he said that the hospital had called to inform her that the patient Lin Mu, although alive, had lost his memory. It is a good idea to make sure that you have a good idea of what you are getting yourself into and what you want to do with it. Since his nephew turned out to be a tenacious bird, Lin Yifi suggested to his sister to go in and check on him in the hospital. Since she was closest to his nephew Lin Mu, she also said that they should not reveal their intentions until they knew the situation first. Lin Yi suggested that the woman should only check on the young man to find out if he really lost his memory or if he was just pretending. In the intensive care unit, the man was already sitting on his hospital bed. His head was also bandaged. And the man himself was wearing a bluish-gray hospital robe. Someone knocked on the door, and Lin Mu gave permission to enter in front. She was a red-haired doctor in her black dress with a small neckline and a blue stone and pendant on a gold chain. And on top of her as usual in the doctor's robe carrying with her another woman Aunt Lin Lin Mu, who was also wearing beige pants with a black t-shirt. Then, after that, in lace and over a purple cardigan. The mature woman wore a red bead around her neck, adding a twist to her outfit. She recognized the person who came to check on her. Lin Mu clenched her jaw and looked at the women with her bright green eyes pointing her finger at the bandage on his head. He said that in this state he didn't remember anyone at all. Lin's wrong side was heavy and said that she was Lin Mu's aunt. Then she asked the man if he really didn't recognize her at all. He apologized and said that he really didn't remember this woman Lin's wrong side and frowned. Then she told the man not to bother because he didn't remember anything. He also told Lin Mu to rest more to get well as soon as possible. And then she said she would come next time. Then the woman turned to Dr. Ju and asked how it happened her nephew. Lin Mu started to look different. The girl smiled a little and said that the patient Lin Mu's face was damaged from the fall. So they did a small surgery on his face, Lin, the wrong side again, and thanked Dr. Ju for saving the man and asked her to take good care of him. But right now, Lin, the wrong side, just thought that it seemed like Lin Mu had completely forgotten everything. Lin Mu sat in the intensive care unit and flipped through something he was wearing. His old suit, but it was clean and without the inconvenience of red spots and on his bedside table. There was a stack of different books. Sometime later, a man was seen flipping through another book, and to his surprise, he read some rather strange information. Five thousand years, a young man did not understand everything why spiritual Kai was so weak in this world. The man hardly felt it. He closed his eyes and thought that thanks to this book of books, he finally began to understand what after some time, the patient Lin Mu found himself in the corridor of the hospital with the red-haired doctor. He told the young man that he was practically cured, and therefore he thought it was time to get out of the hospital. The man agreed with Dr. Ju's words and put his palms with his fists, thanking the wonderful doctor for all the care he had taken during these few days. Dr. Ju laughed and asked the man about why he was acting like he was from ancient times. Lin Mu was embarrassed and scratched his head, giggling. Then he said that the girl now knew his little secret. 
Lin Mu liked stories about martial arts. Dr. Ju folded his hands in front of him and smiled. He tells Lin Mu to go check soon, then he says that the man needs to spend more time with family and friends, as this can help restore the man's memory. After a while, Lin Mu finished getting out of the hospital and went outside. A few minutes later, a bright yellow taxi pulled up. The man got in the car and drove off somewhere. Lin Mu thought that even though people don't have much spiritual kai in this world, it's amazing to see how humanity can progress so much without it. When they arrived at the university, Lin Mu felt his pockets and realized that he didn't have any cash or cards or a wallet itself. The taxi driver reported that they had arrived at their destination and that the price was $50 a bead. Then, after that, sweat started dripping down the young man's face. He started apologizing to the taxi driver with a stutter. The man told the taxi driver that he was just discharged from the hospital and therefore he didn't have any money. Then the man started asking him for something, but the taxi driver interrupted him in great surprise. The man was shocked that how could a Dong University student not have any money? How could this happen? The man spoke quite loudly, getting shocked by what happened. Lin Mu with a calm face said, That he really didn't have any money with him? The taxi driver smirked and told him to call one of his friends to ask him to pay the pathetic $50 for the taxi. Lin Mu blushed and was embarrassed a drop of sweat started to drip down his face again. He started to say something to the taxi driver with a stutter, but the young man didn't know what to do. Since then, he didn't know anyone. Suddenly, a pink-haired girl with a short haircut appeared in front of Lin Mu. In the window on his head was a bright hat with sophisticated patterns. The girl examined the boy with her red eyes and then greeted him. Lin Mu said in an excited voice that he had just gotten out of the hospital, and he forgot his money. Then the man started asking the girl to pay for his taxi. This pink-haired woman besides the attractive hat with intricate patterns. She was also wearing an attractive outfit of sneakers, glue stockings striped white and black denim shorts. The girl was also wearing a white sports top and a sweater with a stretched neck thrown over it. The girl chuckled and agreed as she pulled out her beautiful light green purse in the shape of a beautiful and cute frog. She said that it would not be a problem for her as she had money. Then the girl tilted her head like a bird to the side, examining Lin Mu's face. After that, she still asked if he had done any plastic surgery on his face, when Lin Mu chuckled and smiled, saying that it wasn't Benny asking the girl to pay first, and then he would tell her everything, once he got out of the yellow car. After a while, they walked around the campus when Mu calmly told the pieces of the story. He remembered the girl with her arms crossed behind her back, listened to him attentively. The man lowered his gaze, talking about what happened. After he fell, the pink-haired girl interrupted him, asking that the man lost his memory. After falling from the balcony, did the man really not remember anything? The girl made the harshest look and sternly asked the man about what it meant. It turned out that your Lin didn't recognize her either. The man glanced at her with his bright green eyes and apologetically said, that he couldn't remember everything, the pink-haired girl had folded her hands in front of her. Then she examined the man and asked if the doctors had told him if he had a chance to restore his memory. Lin Mu looked into the distance with his bright green eyes, saying that he didn't know for sure maybe there was or maybe there wasn't. The girl lowered her bright red eyes, saying that in general, memory loss might not be a bad choice. Maybe it was a blessing. He said that sometimes he would like to forget everything. Do Zion, accompanied by a red-haired and purple-haired friend, walked towards the dark-haired Lin Mu. He looked down and tried not to look at Lin Mu. His face showed an incomprehensible mixture of either sadness or embarrassment. She was still looking at him and stopped to ask the guy if he had done any kind of surgery on himself. He excitedly started to deny it, but the pink-haired girlfriend closed her eyes and said that he had done this surgery. Then she asked him how he was doing to the girl. She said he looked really cute, that she might not even think about him marrying her because the guy had done some kind of surgery on himself. She thought that no one like Lin Mu would always remain a nobody. Later in the afternoon, your Lin was seen standing with a girl. At that time, he met those who were walking too. And at that time, Lin Mu said that it seemed like the previous owner of the body was engaged to that woman. Then Lin Mu smiled sweetly and closed his eyes confidently telling Duzayu.
that he didn't mind breaking off the engagement with him at all. Zio was surprised and firmly called the man by name. The pink-haired girl in the stamp gasped in shock. Lin Mu opened his eyelids, revealing bright green eyes that were clearly not lying. Then he opened his mouth and told the Duzio to you in a loud voice that he would never want to marry someone like you. His Zio friend was surprised. The girl just chuckled, saying that she was quite bold in her statement. Lin Mu flashed his teeth with a smile, and then repeated that if black hair does Iowa you want, then they can break off the engagement. And then the girl will no longer bother Lin Mu. The pink-haired girl laughed and patted him on the shoulder. Kindly admiring his antics, the young man said that he hoped the man would never see him again. A group of girls remained standing to the side. Do I owe it to you to look for an edible middle? It seems that Lin Mu has beaten her pink authority. Then the haired girl laughed happily that Lin Mu finally got her little revenge. She chuckled and asked about the fact that it turned out that the man used to be a wreck. If she was always bullied like this, the woman reported that she wasn't just a bullet, it was very embarrassing. She started telling her about the incident on the stairs where Zion did something. But Lin Mu interrupted the pink-haired woman who curled her lips. It was Doss, Iowa. You wanted to break off the engagement the whole time and Lin Mu just let her go. The man started to get angry. The pink-haired girl crossed her arms in front of her chest and said that she didn't need to do anything more because she left you don't deserve more than that. She asked the man if he was really sorry now that Zion, who was still the prettiest girl in the university, was almost a queen. He believed the pink-haired one that he didn't regret it, Lin, you only regretted letting her go so easily. The pink-haired girl in the hat closed her eyes and told the man to stay away from Duzayoi. She then offered to go inside so that she could show Lin Mu the way to class. They were all already approaching Lin Mu's audience, and the sweet woman was walking quietly. Then the girl felt a movement right in front of her eyes. The arrow was millimeters away from the girl's eyes. However, she caught it with her fingers, with lightning speed, avoiding a terrible wound. Then the girl changed her face and started yelling at a black-haired man with a blue shirt and white pants. This man's name was Chen Hao. She yelled that she had told this man many times not to play darts in class. What would happen? If a guy hit his classmate with a dart, the black-haired guy scratched his forehead excitedly. He angered Baby Tang, who as it turned out was the same pink-haired girl. The guy embarrassedly lowered his eyes and apologized to Headman Bay Bay, promised that this would never happen again. The girl closed her eyes and said that the skill of this man named Chen Hao was not so good to show off in public. Tan Bei Bei thrust out her hand, and the dart were right in the center of the round dartboard Lin Mu seemed so precision. Foundation-level dimension span Bei 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 stood near the teacher's desk on the blackboard. She announced to the man that he wanted to reintroduce produce her to all her classmates, and then she called him by name. The girl also reminded everyone that Lin Mu had received some injuries and had to be in the hospital. Bei Bei smiled slightly and added that although Lin Mu had recovered, he had lost her memory in light of this circumstance. The girl wanted to hope that every classmate could help, at least in some way. Tang Bei Bei said that they as a group will try to do everything possible to restore Lin Mu's memory. The classmates were inspired by such a speech by their principal, and they clapped loudly. A knock on the door, a middle-aged woman with a red bun on her head, and in a tight gray suit entered the office. Then, after that, the teacher was seen entering the classroom, and Lin Mu was seen standing there along with a girl wearing a hat. It was known that the suit consisted of a jacket and skirt, as well as a lace shirt with a ruffle. This woman was also wearing a pair of unruly two-strand regular glasses, despite the bun making the woman a little younger and less tight. She smiled softly, holding some papers in her hand, and then asked if she had missed anything interesting. The Donghe University classroom was a large room with a flat floor made with a light color of almost white. Even the boards for colored markers of the student tables and chairs were made of light metal. Only the teacher's desk was made of wood with a slightly orange color. Then after that, Lin Mu carefully examined the beautiful woman with glasses who had just entered the class. He turned towards Bei Bei and asked about the fact that the woman was also their classmate.
The girl giggled loudly and said that she was their instructor named Song Liangru. He gasped in shock. Song Liangru smiled and said that ever since that guy came back to them at Donghe University, he needed to go somewhere with an instructor. Lin Mu looked at her in surprise. She shouted to wake the man up, that he should not stand up and leave with Miss Song as soon as possible. Then afterwards, he excitedly gasped and followed the instructor who was already in the office teacher's dream. The lady was sitting on her soft black computer chair and the smiling instructor. In Liang Ru's office was also bright. The walls were white and the floor was light gray. Only the wooden desk with an orange hue and the black computer chair stood out against this bright background. She said she heard about the incident and asked the man, Is everything all right? She smiled gently and thanked him for his concern believing in Miss Song, that the young man thought he was already quite healthy like a cucumber, let alone fresh not pickled. She smiled and looked with her blue eyes through the lenses of her glasses. Then she said, she nodded in agreement. There was a knock on the door. When it opened, Bebe peeked from behind the door and asked Miss Song if they were done. Because the girl really wanted to have lunch with Lin Mu and then at the same time show him the university. After that, the woman said that they were done and people could leave. She also thanked Bibi for doing all this for Lin Mu. The pink-haired baby smiled shyly and giggled, saying that she had to keep doing it. Because they were classmates when people left the door, Liangru Song asked if it was really Lin Mu. Because not only his appearance, but also his personality had changed significantly. The road around the campus was neatly cleaned. The pedestrian path is made of light stone. The sidewalk is painted white. The trees are neatly trimmed and have a nice view for the grass. It is also perfectly trimmed without any flaws, as if the grass rules have just been laid out straight from the store when people walk around the campus. Then afterwards, Lin Mu praised Bei Bei for throwing darts so well. He suggested that the girl was very much involved in playing darts. She smiled playfully and said that considering her training at home, this trick was nothing. And then she asked if the young man also wanted to practice playing darts. Lin Mu smiled gently and said it would be fun to practice. And then she asked if the young man also wanted to practice playing darts. Lin Mu smiled gently and said it would be fun to practice. Tang Beibei stopped the man and put his hands on her shoulders to see. She noticed that the man's body had become much stronger than before. Even according to him, Lin Mu had been practicing hard for a long time before he was surprised that Baby didn't know that falling from the balcony could bring such benefits. Then a drop of sweat dripped down Lin Mu's face. The excited man reported that his almost dead body was his only plus. He made the man conclude that falling from the balcony was not worth it. Tang Baby thought about it. He scratched his neat chin and said that it would not be in vain. But the frightened man bulged his green eyes and interrupted the girl. He told her not to think of it that way. The pink-haired girl suddenly became serious and said that she was just curious what Lin Mu would do now. The young man closed his eyes and thought about what he should do now he said he had no plans. The man also said that he couldn't even remember anything from the past at all. Tang Bei Bei smiled slightly and asked, Did Lin Mu ever want to live his life differently? The young man again bulged his bright green eyes and asked the pink-haired girl, What does that mean? The baby reported that before was a weak introvert who stood up for himself and people like Doozy. As you continue to bully the baby man, Tang pointed his finger at his heart and said that the current Lin Mu not only looks different, but also looks different. The baby reported that before was a weak introvert who couldn't stand up for himself and people like Doozy. As you continuously bully the Tang pointed her finger at her heart and said that the current Lin Mu not only looks different, but also seems to have a different personality. The pink-haired girl raised her hand and said that she thinks this accident was given to this man by God as an opportunity to change himself. Then after that, he started a new life. Then why else would Lin Mu be given such a strong body? The girl asked the man why he didn't take advantage of such a great opportunity. Inspiring Lin Mu looked at the girl with his burning, bright green eyes and asked her what she thought about what he needed to do. She smiled slightly and asked Lin Mu, had he ever heard of the Green Dragon Defenders? But after hearing that, 
Lin Mu's eyes bulged and said what the dragon hunters meant. However, Tang Bei Bei became more serious. She said that before talking about the dragon defenders. She should also talk about the martial arts world. The girl looked sharply at the man and asked, did he believe that there were people who could kill with just a simple leaf? However, the man looked at the girl in surprise and thought, could it be with spiritual help? He became serious and said in awe that he believed in the existence of such a person, yet he still asked if such a person existed today. Tang Bei Bei became stricter. Did Lin Mu really think that such a person could be found so easily she lowered her bright red eyes and revealed? That legend has it that some masters have reached dementia tan design. The pink-haired girl reported that her grandfather once became very close to this dimension. But unfortunately, he was defeated by the inner demons, and his grandfather lost all his cultivation. However, to the joy of the baby, his beloved grandfather still survived. Tang Bebe became sad while telling this difficult story. Lin Mu gently put his hand on his classmate's shoulder and tried to encourage him. He told Bebe not to be sad because he was still alive, which was much more important than any cultivation. The dimension with his grandfather's guidance, he believed that this talented person would one day glorify Tang Sec. Lin Mu's green eyes bulged in surprise. He then asked the baby about the Tang sect, whether he was encountered by a pink-haired girl laughing and poking Lin Mu's forehead with her index finger, surprised him. Even more, she started laughing more. Lin Mu thinking of the same Tang sect from the martial arts novel. She smiled enthusiastically and said that the sect existed outside the novel. The talented people of the Tang sect, like Tang Bei Bei himself, was a master of poison and hidden weapons. Basichuan Tang sect Lin Mu had a record of how he split up, and someone was watching him. Tang Deer said that at the peak, they had many Zion experts. Chan Lin Mu adjusted his black-haired bangs forward, so that it even covered his right eye, and then asked about how strong these Tan Zion experts were. Carrie Baby looked at the man with her red eyes and said that Grandpa said that all their techniques that were still used by the Tang SEC people were created by these scientists. Lin Mu expert was surprised he bulged his bright green eyes the color of new grass groaned again. He asked the girl what happened so the dragon defenders were composed of such experts at this time, the young man thought. That it seemed that these Zion experts were equivalent in strength to the level of the Tang Bei Dementia Foundation walking forward. She closed her eyes and said that certainly not the dragon protector created by the Hue Asia government for a special occasion. Bei Bei explained that following some sects send their disciples to the team to break through faster. She also said that the girl was now training such a team. Lin Mu asked the Tang baby with interest, even a little embarrassed, if he could join the team. If he was not from Tang SEC, the baby smiled brightly and said that he would definitely be able to join. He also said that Lin Mu's potential combined with good training would allow the young man to be no weaker than his team's recruits. He then asked uncertainly if Lin Mu would join the Dragon Protectors. Lin Mu looked into the distance thinking the girl was calmly waiting for his answer. The man looked at the girl firmly and agreed, saying that he really wanted to live a completely different life at night. The men came to the bright, luminous building located in the city. The luminous building was multi-storied. This was Tang Long Company. When Lin Mu walked over quite surprised, he asked Tang Baby about whether the Dragon Defender's headquarters was in the middle of the city. He closed his eyes and calmly replied that why not, because as an important government agency they could not be stationed somewhere in the mountains still. What if there was some kind of urgency? It would be too late by the time the Dragon Defenders arrived. Lin Mu scratched his head with his hand. But after that, out of embarrassment, a drop of sweat dripped down his face again. At this time, the classmates had already entered into the 10th long corporate building and were waiting for the elevator to get to the Dragon Defenders headquarters. The elevator opened, and they got inside the elevator as a regular small room made of regular matte gray metal. There are as many as 21 floors of buttons in this elevator is a skyscraper. When they got into the elevator, Lin Mu asked Baby Tang about the fact that the whole building is the headquarters of the Dragon Defenders. 
Tang Bei Bei took out some kind of golden plastic card and ran it along the wall of the elevator where there was a panel with blue screen floor buttons with a blue interface open in front of them. The girl poked something at Lin Mu information. The Tang Long Corporation was just an ordinary disguise of their Dragon Defenders team headquarters. Then she calmly stood up and told the man who realized in shock that they were not going up at all. He immediately stopped. The man asked about why they were going down what was happening. The frightened man moved to the wall and attached himself to the metal layer. The elevator made a distinctive sound, telling them that they had arrived at the right floor. The elevator doors slowly opened. The Bay Bay stepped forward. The people saw the light office of the girl almost shades of white. The office was not simple. In fact, it was somewhat similar to a scientific laboratory. The people of the Dragon Defenders team wore white suits and white robes, similar to the robes of scientists or doctors. Then everyone was busy with their job duties, like Anson and the Antel or Bee in the Hive here was the Dragon Defenders headquarters. After arriving at the Dragon Defenders headquarters, Lin Mu and Tang Bei passed by the science office and went to the back office inside the interior, was quite interesting. Beige smooth walls, doors, and floors made of dark wood, the furniture was made in a dark color, almost black, which created a beautiful contrast in the room. When the people went inside, a man was sitting in front of them in the black fortress, his eyes shone with a bright golden light. It seemed that this white-haired man in a traditional Chinese suit had just woken up. He looked seriously at the baby and asked the girl, What was he doing in the headquarters in the middle of the night at this time? Lin Mu was looking at what was happening around him, and especially the gray-haired man with a shoulder-length hairstyle. The man thought that he had just seen the spiritual Kai emanation from this old man. It seemed that this old man had broken through the base dimension directly to the energy-gathering dimension, but the young man understood that this old man was still far from the tenth dimension Tang Zion. The baby beamed a series and told his uncle Yong, that he had brought a martial arts genius. He reported that there was one in a million people like Lin Mu. He started to get up from his carpet while grinning. He said that the baby had no sense to joke about her boyfriend. Bei Bei ran to Uncle Yong while smiling. He had assured him that Lin Mu was not her boyfriend. Then the pink-haired girl suggested that the old man check out this man named Lin Mu himself. He smiled and agreed to do so, saying that he would believe his niece's word. Baby Tang took his Uncle Yang's arm and led him to Lin Mu. When he came over and put his hand on Lin Mu's shoulder, examining him with the most serious and stern gaze, Baby peeked from behind Uncle Yang and giggled. Yang Uncle bulged his bright brown eyes with a golden hue and looked at Lin Mu in surprise. Then how is this possible? Uncle Yang never stopped being surprised how strong the man's body was, even though he didn't know martial arts at all. Tang Bei Bei smiled sweetly, closing his eyes. He told his uncle that was exactly what he was talking about. He then introduced Lin Mu to his uncle. He also said that Lin Mu used to be an ordinary person, but after falling from the balcony, his body became several times stronger. Uncle Yong frowned at the bridge of his nose tense. He was surprised how could this happen. Lin Mu replied with a calm voice. He didn't know that the young man also said that they tried everything in the hospital. But they never found the reason that happened. He asked Lin Mu if the man was thinking of joining the ranks of the Dragon Defenders team. To which the man replied with a calm voice. He didn't know that the young man also said that they tried everything in the hospital. But they never found the reason for what happened. He asked Lin Mu if the man was thinking of joining the ranks of the Dragon Defenders team to which the man replied with firm agreement. Young uncle furrowed his brows even more, showing seriousness. He said that before becoming part of the team, Lin Mu needed to take a test. And when the man joined the Dragon Defenders team, it would not be easy to stay away from them. Then afterwards, the gray-haired man asked the man if he understood this. The young man tilted his head to the bird-like sign and said that Dear Tang had already explained everything to him before coming to the Dragon Defense Vendor headquarters, the man also said. That he had made a decision he really wanted to join the Dragon Defense team. The young uncle grinned and looked at the man sternly. 
He told the man that he was ready to start the exam in order to pass it as soon as possible, the man believed. That with such talent as Lin Mu already had, he could easily pass it, the white-haired man also said dear. If Lin Mu doesn't do it, don't learn martial arts with such a body. The young uncle gave Lin Mu a thick blue notebook with some hieroglyphics. He said that this notebook contained breath-holding techniques he believed that there was no better technique to lay the foundation, the man said. To the man to completely burn this book after Lin Mu read it because the information leaks within the Dragon Defender team. They were unacceptable. He kept seeing the man grinning even more than the gray-haired old man told the man to follow the instructions given in this thick notebook. And then, after Lin Mu mastered the technique, he needed to find Uncle Yong. Lin Mu listened attentively to the man who took the thick blue book from his hand. He thanked the old man. Tang Baby said that in that case, he would definitely take Lin Mu to the test. The young uncle agreed and said that those people could leave after those people left Uncle Yan's room. He laughed out loud. He thought that the baby had really given him some kind of miracle, the man was sure. That the Donghai branch would soon receive a new expert in the middle of the night. Lin Mu returned to the dormitory, arriving at his room. Then the young man immediately began to learn a new technique to hold his breath. As he read the thick blue book, he thought that he didn't know at all while the spiritual kite was so strange. The man decided to assume that maybe it was because of the weak Kai in this world. A young man closed the book. Then he looked at his ring, which was shining brightly, from which black smoke was coming out. It seemed like a spiritual Kai was manifesting. Lin Mu looked at the ring in his hand, thinking he wondered when he could get the items from the vault contained in this ring. The man was also interested when he could use this ring for other purposes. This ring was the only item he had left behind from the world where the soul of this greatest immortal cultivator had come encased in the body of the original Lin Mu. He watched as the black smoke began to dissipate along with the bright light from the ring that the man got up from the table. He decided that as soon as the sun rose, the man would go to the library and look for information about this strange world where Kai was spiritually weak to nightmares soon. The next morning, Lin Mu went to the library, and it was seen that the library inside was a luxurious interior. Light brown columns, beige walls, and carpets patterned in various shades of brown on the floor. Visible furniture looked antique. But at the same time, no less luxurious antique sofas and chairs were beautiful and yellow-brown color, and tables made of dark wood. People were whispering so quietly, so as not to disturb anyone, or they were busy reading books or learning something new. Lin Mu was just a person who was learning something new for himself. He had collected a small stack of books and was sitting on a recliner with yellow patterns on it. The dark wooden table was a stack of books that the man would read later when the man was reading. He heard a shout that broke the idol. But after that, the silence in the library, they shouted Wang Dong's name. She glanced at the source of the sound and the sawdust. Talking to blonde man and a white coat were actively moving her hands, saying something to the boy. She spoke quite loudly to this blonde that she warned the man not to mistreat her anymore. She also told him not to think he was valuable just because this man's family had money. He smiled brightly and said that he said, Iowa, you are both equally rich, so they were, in this blonde's opinion, perfect for each other. She believed that since they were the heirs of their family, then everything matched perfectly. Then the girl looked at him with undisguised contempt and anger. Her eyebrows nodded to the bridge of her nose to the maximum she was on the verge of anger. Am I all you asked him who he thought he was? Then he asked Wang Dong, when will the Wang family be transferred to her after giving her a look full of contempt? Zai, oh, you turned around and started walking away in the opposite direction. Wang Dong caught up with her and asked if you rejected her because of her engagement to the cowardly step of the Lin family. The girl stopped, but remained silent. He continued to pester the girl, saying that he had heard that Lin Mu was a non-entity. Wang Dong really doesn't understand how a guy like Lin Mu can be with a girl like Doozy. The dark-haired girl noticed Lin Mu and gave him the same angry look. Even though it wasn't because of him, Lin Mu pretended to be someone who didn't hear anything and was just reading a book. Wang Dong noticed Iowa Lin Muhu. You are a smirking look calling him. 
Then, still smirking, he asked the man how things were going, calling him Master Lin, he openly ignored him. Wang Dong was quite annoyed with this. Well, where are his manners? He knitted his eyebrows to the bridge of his nose and walked over to Lin Mu. Looking at the man from above, he asked Lin Mu if he hadn't heard what Don had asked him. Then the blonde man asked the young man if he might have a hearing problem when Lin Mu looked up with a disdainful look from his bright green eyes and asked if he knew this blonde man, and then asked what she wanted from him. The blonde man named Wang Dong grinned again. He reported that he had heard Lin Mu and that doozy when you were engaged. Then he said that he just wanted to warn Lin Mu that he should hurry up and break off the engagement with this girl. Lin Mu lowered his calm gaze and calmly replied, not surprised by the engagement question. He told the blonde that they had called it off. Then the young man said that he no longer cared about the affairs of the dark-haired girl. So the blonde no longer went up to the man. The blonde turned in surprise and asked the girl again. He made the most innocent eyes in the world and said in a low voice that this was not the case and he and Lin Mu did not cancel the engagement at all. Wang Dong suddenly ripped the book out of Lin Mu's hands and then threw it on the floor. It fell onto the patterned brown carpet with a crash. Then the man leaned towards Mu with an angry smile. He was frankly upset that the man decided to deceive him. Dawn threatened Lin Mu that the man would pay for his lies. Lin Mu snorted and suddenly grabbed the neck of Wang Dong's shirt, not forgetting his red tie. He chuckled and asked what kind of jerk Lin Mu was going to do to him. Lin Mu suddenly grabbed him from behind and threw him onto the patterned carpet. The young blonde fell to the floor with a crunching sound. He started to ask Lin Mu about what he was doing at all. The black-haired man stepped on the blonde man's chest and started pressing. Then after that, he didn't let him get up. He screamed in pain. Lin Mu turned around and asked, Does Zion still need an engagement? The girl made a serious face and said that of course not. But both parents are men, that is. The parents want it. She also said that this whole engagement process is not that simple, so you have to do everything right. Lin Mu slaps his forehead with the palm of his hand inside heavily. He tells the girl that he didn't think that all of this would bother her. Because of the length of time, the man turns to a blonde-haired man named Wang Dong, whose face is twisted in pain. The young man tells him that Do Zio is still technically Lin Mu's fiancé, so the young man tells Wang Dong to stay away from him. A man named Lin Mu, he grunts, asking Lin Mu if he knows who a man like Wang Dong is. Lin Mu presses his black patent leather boots harder on Don's hand, telling her that Lin Mu doesn't care who Wang Dong is. Then he told him to answer what he said earlier. He started screaming in pain, agreeing that he would leave. Lin Mu removed his leg from her arm and ordered him to disappear. A blonde man named Wang Dong, rubbing his sore arm, rushed to disappear. The library destroyed chairs lying on the floor. The girl saw what was going on, shocked. Lin Mu continued to watch as the blonde man in a white shabby suit walked away into the sunset. He finished Wang Dong, left the luxurious library room, leaving Lin Mu and Du Zio to deal with the mess. Wang Dong threw a look full of contempt and anger. He thought that no little nobody named Lin Mu would pay for the humiliation. He finished Wang Dong, left the luxurious library room, leaving Lin Mu and Du Zio to deal with the remaining mess. After the fight on the game screen, and the fight, all the spectators ran and started chatting in the library as if they were in a sports stadium, in some famous super team matches. Then, after the incident in the library, and it looked very chaotic, Suddenly, a black-haired, middle-aged man in a black suit with a decoy around his neck ran forward. He started shouting, trying to figure out what happened here. He also asked the audience to stop shouting and be quiet, because they were in the wrong place. Lin Mu turned around and looked at the librarian guiltily. A drop of sweat ran down his face. The young man apologized and said that here the student accidentally collided with the table. The man picked up the fallen chair and started putting everything in its place. He assured the librarian that he would put everything in its place. Then after that, a black hair appeared from behind and told Lin Mu that he had changed a lot. Because he wasn't like this at all before the man froze and looked at the girl out of the corner of his eye, but then turned around again and continued to tidy things up, simultaneously replied the girl that maybe this was for the best 
because now he would obviously have less problems. The girl was quiet for a while. But then she raised her voice again, warning me that Wang Dong was one of those evil types of people who always took revenge on everyone. Xiao Yu asked Lin Mu to be careful. Lin Mu laughed and even smiled slightly, thanking the girl for her warning. Then, while cleaning, the man noticed a book lying on the patterned brown carpet. It was revealed as the man walked over to pick it up. He peeked at the text that read, One must finish what they start. If the enemy returns, the young man picked up the book and carefully read this sentence. He thought about it rubbing his sharp chin with his hand. Finish what you start. What does it mean Lin Mu is stating the fact that he has learned the breath-holding technique, so he needs to find Uncle Yong as soon as possible and get something new? Then after that, the Wang family's house was huge. This house is in no way inferior to the Lin family's house, which has a four-story building with an attic made with cold colors. And even dark to go to this luxurious house, it is necessary to cross an equally luxurious bridge located over the water. In the middle of the house, there is a large panoramic window. To the floor on the side of the first floor, there is an ordinary window on the second floor, already with a small balcony on the third floor. There is a big, gorgeous balcony. And the glass door leading to them, a heart-wrenching scream came from this luxurious house. Someone called a bunch of useless bad guys. One of the employees in a classic black suit even flew an open book and right on the head. Although he managed to block the blow with his hand, he was clearly in pain. The other employees listening to the bad stuff at their address were pouring streams of sweat. The man shouted that he had given his employees a whole week and they were bringing too little of the necessary information. The man started spraying even more, saying that he spent a lot of money on his employees and they were letting him down and doing nothing. A mature man with blonde hair spread his arms out to the side while shouting that the staff had told him that Lin Mu was a weakling and a coward. The man who seemed to be Wang Dong's father was completely baffled as to how Lin Mu had the sense to have the courage to break Wang Dong's arm. Where did the man even get such destructive courage? So the employees embarrassedly bowed their heads and were bathed in sweat. Because of the fear and horror at the time of reporting that they only reported what they saw Lin Mu. According to them, it used to be different. He was weak and cowardly. The senior man of the Wang family stopped and continued to question the staff in a calm tone. Even though he had stopped shouting, his face was still red from anger and with very swollen veins. Because it was too much effort, Wang Dong's father asked the employee to explain more details about Lin Mu's changes. Then, afterwards, the restless man with black hair cautiously began to tell his superiors that they had bribed someone from the Lin family's servant mansion from what the worker said it was clear that Lin Mu was a weak and terrible coward. But after the incident of falling from the fourth floor balcony, the young man lost his memory and became very courageous. In addition, he began to appear at home. Not too often, Wang Dong's father looked at his workers in a suit and told them to go and bring Mr. Lin Mu to him. Like soldiers exactly on the ropes, saying that they will definitely fulfill their new duties. The Wang family senior's blonde face was twisted with malice and anger. The man's grin was really scary. The man spoke quietly, speaking to Lin Mu. Did the man really think that everyone would be afraid of him? Because he was from the Lin family, the man said that the man had offended him. Wang Jun Lei, the man promised the man that he would make Lin Mu want to die the next day, or maybe even a couple days. Then Lin Mu left the university building as usual. But just today, a beige minibus was parked right in front of the entrance of Donghai University. The young man carefully inspecting the car with his bright green eyes was something very wrong. Three men somewhat similar to bikers came out of the minibus, muscular, burly men with tattoos and short hair. In addition, one of them also wore aviator glasses. Two of them wore long-sleeved t-shirts and denim pants. The man with sunglasses wore a short t-shirt and a torn denim vest. He just asked the stopped green-eyed man if he was your Lin. The man replied in the affirmative and asked the bikers under what problem they came to the man. Then the man in the middle smiled an evil grin and said that their boss had invited Mr. Lin Mu for a cup. The man glared with his bright green eyes and said that he didn't know their boss at all. The head of this stern team smiled evilly and told the man to stop wasting time. 
He suggested that Lin Mu obediently go with them if he didn't want to be beaten. The man sighed and agreed to go with them, while they were driving in the beige minibus. The man sitting in the black leather car seat thought that it seems that the Wang family really likes to take revenge on others. Lin Mu chuckled and smiled, thinking it was even for the best, because Lin Mu also really liked it. Then after that, a mature man with blonde hair was seen smoking a large cigarette, and at the same time one of the workers told his boss that Lin Mu had arrived at his place. He exhaled thick smoke while smiling. Then the man ordered Lin Mu to be taken to his office. The workers went out, and a few minutes later there was a knock on the door. Chun Lai told me to enter Lin Mu's office in a white university suit, entered the office of boss Wang Zheng Lai, and behind the man. Mr. Wang's employees in black classic suits lined up in a semicircle. The interior of Chief Wang's office was made in light shades of light gray tiles on the floor, making the room a little bigger than this. And the walls were also bright. Almost white, like the color of France, a champagne expensive leather sofa made of beige leather and a dark oak coffee table completed them. Wang Jun Lai was sitting on the beige sofa, looking at Lin Mu. Then he asked the man who was looking at him maliciously asked, Did he understand what he was dealing with? To which Lin Mu coldly replied that he did not know at all. The man twisted his face in anger again. Bringing his ruffled eyebrows to the bridge of his nose, gritting his teeth, the man judged that he was giving the man a hint. This stern man, the hint was that Wang Dong was his son. Then after that, Lin Mu smiled. She giggled and started joking about them, so that's what the fuss was about the boy being beaten up, and now his parents want to help the boy. Wang Jun Lai laughed and clapped his hands holding his cigar between his fingers, in his opinion. Lin Mu is quite a brave person since such a conversation has started. Before Lin Mu, no one dared to talk to Mr. Wang like that. He smiled wickedly and said that because Lin Mu is from the Lin family. He decided to go easy on him. He told the man that he could leave here. When he tore his tendon, Lin Mu went cold and sternly looked at the man asking what would happen. If he didn't, the employee gently put his hand on Lin Mu's shoulder, asking him not to complicate the situation. It fell right on top of the dark brown coffee table and smashed it to pieces. Forming a circle, they were ready to attack Lin Mu smiled with undisguised joy. Jun Lai watched the scene almost with imaginary popcorn. She shouted that the battle was pretty good, the smile on the man's face. Even at such a tense moment, the newborn bull was not afraid of the tiger. Then suddenly Wang Jun Lai turned his face tense again into a swelling of the vessels on his face. He ordered his employees like trained predators to tear off pieces of guide. Lin Mu stood still, he told Mr. Wang's employees to attack him at all, and as soon as possible because the man had absolutely no time for them. Because he still needed to talk to their boss, the employees took out their small knives, and someone even took out a wooden stick. Lin Mu took a fighting stance, preparing to block Motley's attack. Then the employees started attacking the man. However, he blocked their blows in every possible way, and even counterattacked, he hit one of them a redhead in the chest. Another a brunette punched him in the face. Another employee was hit with a foot on the patent leather of a shoe on the right rib, almost next to the solar plexus. Ten seconds later, Lin Mu was adjusting his clothes. The sleeves of his blue shirt and white jacket, the employees were lying around him on the floor, tiled with gray knives, and bats were lying next to him, Everyone was either unconscious or they were trying not to show any sign of life in order not to get a portion of the beating from Mr. Lin Mu. Once again, Wang Jin Lai opened his mouth in shock, his face contorted again. All the frowns and cold sweats he didn't understand at all. How such a thing was even possible, Lin Mu slightly furrowed his brows to the bridge of his nose and smiled again, chuckling. He asked Jun Lai about how a man fights. Then the young man invited him to continue. Lin Mu said that Wang Jun Lai and his son Wang Dong took Lin Mu quite a lot of time. The young man was very interested in how the people of the Wang family would compensate Lin Mu for the time wasted worrying. In earnest, Wayne, Jun Lei spread his hands to the side and said that it was all their fault. He then offered Lin Mu $20 million as compensation. The black-haired man chuckled and smiled evilly.
Did this old man offer him $20 million dirty money? Yes, the bastard money was definitely not interested in Lin Mu, who was last trying to calm down from fear trying to convince the man that this was pure 100 cleanest. $20 million. Lin Mu agreed and started rummaging with his hands in the inner pocket of his jacket. Taking out a bank card from his jacket, he ordered the money to be transferred to it. He agreed to do it, but he needed a computer. After a while, Wayne Jun Lai entered all the necessary data in the computer and transferred $20 million to the bank car. He turned the monitor screen towards the man. Chun Lai smiled and said that everything was ready and the man could check. That the money had been transferred to his account. Then after that, she lowered her hand while Lin Mu was distracted because the man was doing something silently. Then after that, Lin Mu thanked Boss Wang and said that if that was all, then he would go home. The man looked serious and told the young man that there was no need to rush. He invited the man to chat more. At this time, under the table while holding a gun in his right hand, Wang Jun Lai took out a gun from under the table and pointed it at Lin Mu. But at that moment, he didn't move. Lin Mu smiled wickedly and started teasing the man. He started questioning the young man why he stopped. Wasn't it Lin Mu who acted so cool earlier? However, Lin Mu smirked. Then he suddenly kicked the man's table, shocking the man he fell off the chair and dropped the gun. Lin Mu asked the man, Is it so precious? Wang Jun Lai had just dug his own grave. He tried to force a smile, asking Mr. Lin. Then he insisted that it was just a simple misunderstanding. He started to say that actually, the man really just wanted to talk to the young man, the fierce man replied that he thought they had nothing to talk about. Now it was like stepping on a berry. The man who lost all hope looked at the young man with a pleading look. He was sorry John Lai said that he was sorry. One of the men said that the Lin family and the Wang family were very close, so they shouldn't complicate things. He said it didn't matter what orders the young master gave him. Now Wang Jun Lai promised to fulfill them using all his abilities. Lin Mu gasped if that was what Mr. Wang wanted. Then it was okay the man grabbed him the man around his neck and put some kind of pill in his mouth. He swallowed it against his will and then salivated while grumbling asking about what Lin Mu had just given him. Lin Mu pointed his finger at him and said he didn't believe him. He also said that Wang Jung gave a lie to beauty. Then the man said that if he behaved well, the young man would give him an antidote every three months. Otherwise, John Lai would die a very painful death. Finally, Lin Mu advised him to think about it well. He turned around and left Mr. Wang's office. A bell rang from Lin Mu's pants pocket. The man took out his phone and saw that Tan Bei Bei had called him. He answered the call where she told him to come to the Dragon Defender headquarters as soon as possible. And that was a task for her. Then, after a while, Lin Mu was already in the building. Tang Long Corporation went inside. He saw a large crowd of people in a room similar to a movie theater, but without seats. When he saw Bei Bei, he asked the girl about what happened and why everyone gathered here. The pink-haired girl turned her gaze to the man and reported that they had just captured the leader of a group of mercenaries. His subordinates held 20 people hostages demanding the release of their leader, but she lost control of the situation. Tang Bei Bei becomes more serious, she says that the mercenaries are not only taking hostages in numbers of 20. They also want to attack Pearl Tower Bay, says that the dragon protector must stop them. Lin Mu asks the girl if they have a plan. Headman says that their main task is to rescue the hostages, as well as help other units. Lin Mu asked her if they were really going to rescue together. She gave him a strange look and replied in the negative, that if they had enough people, they wouldn't have done it. Then afterwards, he had called for recruits, a classmate told the man. That his new recruit only needed to determine the location of the hostages, and then inform the elders about it. Uncle Yong turned towards the crowd of people and told them that this task was very important. He had already explained the situation, so they should not waste time. He became even more severe, but after that, the man looked at the people and ordered the crowd to depart now. At night, in the western city of Donghai, there is a luxurious residential complex with multi-story buildings. The streets were very quiet and desolate. Lin Mu, who was on the roof of one of the houses, was spying on the building in front of him. 
The atmosphere around it looked eerie. Lin Mu could feel that there seemed to be many people in that place, but all the rooms in that place were empty and uninhabited. Without thinking for a long time, Lin Mu instantly jumped down from the top of the attic and landed perfectly. After that, Lin Mu tried to peek through one of the windows in the building to see what was going on in the room. Lin Mu immediately activated his green eyes to look around. Then he found something under the sewer on the ground near the building. Lin Mu immediately approached there and immediately opened the drain cover with all his might. In his heart, he didn't expect them to be hiding in there. After the cover of the channel was lifted, there was a bright light from underground that shone brightly all the way to the top. It turned out that there were hundreds of stairs leading to a room down there. Out of curiosity, Lin Mu went straight down the stairs. There was a dashing man wearing a skull mask holding a large weapon wearing full clothes. He was a guard from the room who was snooping around. Instantly, the guard heard the sound of Lin Mu's movement above the surface. Just as he was about to look up, Lin Mu suddenly came hanging from above and his two legs tied around the guard's neck, which made him unable to breathe, and then slowly fell unconscious. The body of the guard wearing the skull mask was lying on the ground. Lin Mu started to approach the man's lying body and looked at him like he had an idea. Instantly, he took off the clothes from the man. Not long after Lin Mu had put on all the equipment from him, he disguised himself by wearing the clothes of the guard man where Lin Mu had worn a skull mask and also held a large gun in his hand. After that, Lin Mu moved forward and approached a room. Upon arriving at the door of the room, Lin Mu said to someone inside that there was something wrong happening outside. Suddenly hearing that, a bald-headed man who was also wearing a skull mask appeared from behind the door with a sharp gaze looking at Lin Mu where he did not realize that Lin Mu was an intruder because he had disguised himself by wearing the clothes of the guard outside earlier. At the same time, Lin Mu activated his green eyes and saw that the bald-headed man had a gun in his pants pocket. When the man was about to take out his gun to alert him, with a swift movement, Lin Mu grabbed his hand and pulled it, then kicked the bald man's leg with such force that he fell to the floor. The bald man screamed because of the pain in his leg from Lin Mu's kick. Feeling threatened, the bald man grabbed his gun and pointed it at Lin Mu who was in front of the bald man. In a snapping tone, he asked Lin Mu who he really was and then threatened Lin Mu if he did not tell the truth, then he would not hesitate to shoot him. Seeing that Lin Mu did not think long, he immediately ran towards the bald man with lightning speed and then raised his leg to kick the bald man's head. Because of the hard impact, the man finally fell unconscious and lay on the floor. Then Lin Mu entered into a narrow room that was there. He looked at the few people in the room and guessed that they were all hostages being held. In front of Lin Mu were several people who looked very scared. Lin Mu guessed that they were all hostages. Lin Mu observed his surroundings. Then he saw in the corner of the room there were two large bags that he was looking for. Not thinking for long, Lin Mu immediately approached the two bags without caring about the hostages beside him. Lin Mu immediately opened the bag to make sure the contents inside. It turned out that the contents were so many hundred thousand bills. Lin Mu was happy to see that. He thought that they had stolen a lot of money because there was a lot of cash in the bag. Because Lin Mu wore a mask and disguised himself as part of the criminal's figure, the hostages did not know Lin Mu's real identity so it crossed Lin Mu's mind to escape and take the two bags of money without caring about the hostages. Lin Mu was quick to close the bag and he carried it out of the place. In his heart, Lin Mu laughed happily because now that much money was his. But a woman wearing a pink tank top who was among the hostages stared intently at Lin Mu's back, who was carrying away the bag of money. In the woman's mind, she thought that he was part of the criminals who had killed her other friend for wanting to have the money alone. Then the woman wearing the pink tank top saw that there was a gun lying in front of her. It crossed her mind that it was an opportunity for her to stop Lin Mu's action. With movements so fast that she rolled on the floor, the woman was like a very good detective. She picked up a gun and pointed it at Lin Mu's back while threatening him not to move an inch or else she would shoot him on sight. Lin Mu chuckled at the woman's action of trying to thwart his plan. 
Then, Lin Mu looked back slightly to tell the woman that he didn't want to make things any more complicated. Lin Mu negotiated to let them go while he could take the money away. Hearing those words, the woman did not remain silent. As a policeman, she would not just let Lin Mu run away with the two bags of money, and then the woman told Lin Mu to give up and raise his hand. Lin Mu then turned around and told the woman that he had just found out that she was a policeman. In a casual tone, Lin Mu negotiated with the woman where he suggested that they would divide the two and let him go. Hearing the words of Lin Mu made the woman even more annoyed for talking nonsense like that to her who was a policeman. Then, in a snapping tone, the woman told Lin Mu to drop the bag containing the money. Lin Mu also followed the instructions of the woman. Then the woman looked back and told a man from the hostage group to take off his belt and tie Lin Mu's hands with it. Hearing orders from the woman, the man behind immediately moved according to her directions. The man approached Lin Mu, who was already sitting on the floor while bowing his head. When the man reached him, Lin Mu quickly pulled the man's body and slammed it straight into the policewoman, so that the two of them fell on top of each other, where the man's body fell on the policewoman's body. They both fell on the floor. Then Lin Mu approached the two of them and took a gun from the policewoman. Now it was Lin Mu's turn to threaten them by pointing his gun. Lin Mu said that they didn't need to do things like that and then told them both to go back to the corner of the room and sit still there. Because they felt scared, the policewoman was forced to return to her position. Then Lin Mu continued his way out of the room while carrying the two bags containing money in his hands. Arriving outside the room, he took off all the clothes and changed them as before. Then Lin Mu smiled happily because he had completed the mission perfectly. In the evening, with a very quiet and desolate atmosphere, Lin Mu walked up to a well located behind the courtyard of a hut house. He gazed into the depths of the well and instantly threw the two bags containing the money into the well, then smiled sarcastically as if he was pleased with his accomplishment. Lin Mu thought that he would come back to that place after he solved all the problems. Then Lin Mu reached into his pants pocket for something. He took out his cell phone and called Tang Bei Bei. Lin Mu told her that he had found something suspicious here. It was already crowded in the sewer where the hostages were held. Lin Mu and Tang Bei Bei were standing in a corner watching the newly freed hostages. Then Lin Mu said to Tang Bei Bei if he would report this to the headquarters, saying that all the hostages had been found so that they could enter the next stage. Tang Bei Bei agreed. After all the hostages had been successfully evacuated from the underground place, then they were escorted to the bus to take them home to their respective places. Now only Lin Mu and Tang Bei Bei are still at the scene. Tang Bei Bei said that their mission was not yet complete because she heard from the hostages that there were some suspicious objects in that place. Then they both rushed to the place to check the situation there. Lin Mu also responded like he didn't know anything happened. While walking into the sewer that led to the underground place, Tang Bei, Bei said that the hostages said there were two soldiers fighting, but they were both dead because of the man who attacked him. Tang Bei Bei also couldn't find the dirty money anywhere. The two of them had stood staring at the dead bodies of the mercenary middlemen lying on the floor. Seeing that, Tang Bei Bei assumed that the person who had killed the two mercenaries had done so meticulously. She assumed he was an expert because it looked like the soldiers didn't have a chance to fight back. Tang Bei Bei's facial expression became very angry, and then she said that she would report the matter to the headquarters for investigation to find the real culprit. Lin Mu, who was beside her, only smiled slightly casually, saying that this must have been done by a very professional person. After completing his mission, Lin Mu drove Tang Bei Bei back to her apartment after which she immediately said goodbye to go home on the grounds that he had important matters that had to be resolved immediately. After getting off the apartment, Lin Mu stood on the side of the road to wait for a passing taxi. After waiting for a long time, finally there was a taxi that came to Lin Mu, who was standing on the side of the road. Lin Mu immediately told the driver to take him to the area near Pingjiang. Instantly, the taxi car drove to the destination. During the trip, there was nothing suspicious at all, and after a while they finally arrived at Lin Mu's destination. 
he immediately gave some cash to the taxi driver while saying to tell him to wait for a while because he had to pick up some clothes there. From inside the car, the taxi driver watched Lin Mu's movements. Then he lit the cigarette and waited for Lin Mu to return. After a few minutes of waiting until the cigarette had become half a cigarette, Lin Mu finally returned. Lin Mu asked the taxi driver to open the back trunk so that he could put in the bag containing the money. Then afterward, Lin Mu got back into the car to continue the journey. The driver noticed Lin Mu in the rearview mirror and saw him smiling to himself behind the seat. Then he said that Lin Mu seemed to be happy because of the two bags he was carrying. In response, Lin Mu just chuckled, but in his heart, he felt very happy that the 10 million euros was in his hands. Inside Mr. Wang's office, one of his men entered the room and handed him an envelope that contained the results of his body tests. The envelope contained a document detailing the test results. The subordinate explained that the test results proved that Mr. Wang was not poisoned. Mr. Wang was completely healthy, and there was no problem with him. Then, he ordered his men to leave the room. He stared intently at the envelope containing his test results, and thought to himself that if he wasn't poisoned, then he had been deceived by a child. Mr. Wang's facial expression became furious and full of emotion. At the same time, his cell phone on the desk rang, indicating that someone was calling him. It was an unknown number. Feeling very curious, Mr. Wang picked up the phone. There was a distinctive voice from behind the phone that made Mr. Wang immediately realize that it was Lin Mu. Mr. Wang made small talk to ask how the boy was doing first. Then Lin Mu told him that he had booked a private room at Wang Zhang's restaurant, and he was expecting Mr. Wang to come because he had a few things to say. Hearing that, Mr. Wang immediately said that he would see him immediately, and then immediately turned off the phone. In his mind, he wondered what Lin Mu was really planning. Not long after, Mr. Wang had arrived at Lin Mu's place. The two of them sat face to face at the side of the long dining table, and there was plenty of food in front of them. Without further ado, Mr. Wang immediately asked him to say what he wanted so that he could take care of everything. Lin Mu immediately averted his eyes and said that it wasn't that important. In the corner of the room, there were already two bags filled with money brought by Lin Mu. Lin Mu casually poured wine into a glass while talking about the condition of his family. Then, Lin Mu asked Mr. Wang for one thing that only he could do for him. Feeling curious, Mr. Wang asked about it and said confidently that he could give Lin Mu anything he asked for. Lin Mu smiled slightly and then told him that he had more money in his hands now, so he asked Mr. Wang to help manage the money, since Mr. Wang's brother was also a businessman. Mr. Wang is a figure who doesn't have much ability, but when it comes to business, it is one of his strengths. Hearing the request from Lin Mu made him grin and immediately asked how much money he had. Then Lin Mu replied that the money in his hand was around 20 million euros. No matter how Mr. Wang managed his money, Lin Mu wanted it to double in a short period of time. That was not a problem for Mr. Wang, and he said he was ready to take care of it. Since the two had made a deal, they both toasted to celebrate. On a very sunny afternoon, the sky was blue and there was a group of birds flying over the dormitory building. Lin Mu, who was in one of the rooms, was sitting in front of his laptop. He looked blankly at his laptop and thought to himself that there were too many people in the dormitory and it was getting difficult for him to move around. So, he decided to move to another place. Lin Mu fiddled with his laptop to search for a bigger rental place. It wasn't long before he finally found a place that he thought was very nice and suitable for him. He rushed out to see the place. Lin Mu walked quickly towards the rental house that he got from browsing the internet earlier. After he arrived in front of the house, Lin Mu felt amazed. The large white house made a luxurious impression on the building coupled with the pillars that stood firmly in front of it. When he arrived at the door of the house, Lin Mu immediately pressed the bell button, hoping that the owner of this rental house was a good person. After Lin Mu pressed the bell button, there was an answer from the person inside the house. Instantly, a small child wearing round glasses appeared from behind the door of the luxurious house and asked if he was looking for someone. Lin Mu greeted the little boy and told him that he had seen on the internet that this house was for rent. Hearing that, 
The little boy wearing round glasses asked if he had come to rent. Lin Mu just nodded and then asked about the price of the monthly room rent. Then the little boy invited Lin Mu to enter first, while looking around the room inside, and only after that talked about the cost. After a while, the little boy led the way to take Lin Mu to his rented room. While heading to the upper room, the little boy introduced himself, named Meng Xuan. After that, Lin Mu took turns introducing himself. When walking through the rooms in the house, Lin Mu was amazed to see the interior of the luxurious European-style house. Then Meng Xuan told him that upstairs, there was already a tenant, so there was only one room left for him. Inside the room, it looked more cramped than Lin Mu expected. There was only one bed, a chair, and a television in the room. Arriving at the greeting there, Meng Xuan explained that the monthly rental fee was $1,200 and had to pay a full year at once, and also did not need a deposit. Hearing that made Lin Mu shocked. To him, for the price of a room that is not that big, it is very expensive. Meng Xuan looked away and said with a flat expression telling Lin Mu to look for some other rental houses around the place for hundreds of thousands per month. At the same time, someone from the other room came to their place because they heard Meng Xuan and Lin Mu's conversation. The figure of a woman wearing pink home clothes in a casual style while putting her hair in a ponytail. When the woman looked at Lin Mu, she realized that they knew each other. Seeing the woman's presence also made him startled. She was Miss Song, who was Lin Mu's teacher. Seeing Miss Song's presence in the house, it will be difficult for Lin Mu to do something in the future. So Lin Mu decided not to rent the room on the pretext that the price did not match the money he had. Then Lin Mu immediately left the two of them while apologizing for wasting their time. Seeing Lin Mu's departure made Miss Song feel surprised because she knew that the Lin family was a very rich family. Then she stared intently at Lin Mu's back as he walked away and asked herself if something had happened to his family. After looking around for other places around there, Lin Mu finally found a place that suited him. A large, classic-style house with a large courtyard and a swimming pool at the back of the house. Lin Mu stood looking at every corner in the room with the black suitcase he had brought. In Lin Mu's opinion, this was a quiet and quiet place that was suitable for him to cultivate. Then he walked towards the kitchen and judged that the place was not bad. With a large round dining table and maintained cleanliness, Lin Mu did not regret renting the place. Then it came to his mind that he wanted to cook because he had not held kitchen utensils for a long time. Instantly, Lin Mu has put on an apron and is ready to cook. Lin Mu was seen focusing on steaming the vegetables that were made for his lunch today. After everything was done, Lin Mu arranged the food on the dining table. He realized that his cooking skills weren't so bad, but the ingredients weren't enough, so he immediately took out his phone to order some better ingredients. Lin Mu focused on scrolling through his phone screen to look for some herbal ingredients that he could use for cooking. He widened his eyes as he saw a spiritual ginseng on sale in the market. He did not expect to find it. The 300-year-old spiritual ginseng was extremely perfect, and he was very interested in buying it. When Lin Mu saw the ginseng sales town that was in Nangu Town, Lin Mu decided to buy directly at the store instead of buying online. Lin Mu was already at an airport heading to Nangu City. He was walking in the aisle of the Garbarada. Lin Mu looked a little panicked because it was actually his first time boarding an airplane and wondered what it would be like when flying above the sky. He took out his cell phone to find out where his seat was. Mr. Wang had prepared everything from the flight to the arrival at the destination city. Lin Mu smiled slightly and realized that having the company behind him was very beneficial for him. Inside the airplane was a purple-haired woman surrounded by several men in black suits who seemed to be her bodyguards. That woman was the head of Hao Yue's company named Luo Bing Yun. When Lin Mu walked into the airplane, the woman was astonished and asked the bodyguard sitting next to her why there were other people on the airplane, as she thought that she had rented the entire airplane for herself. The bodyguard then explained to Luo Bing Yun that before departure, the airline told him that they needed VIP seats. Hearing the explanation from her bodyguard made her take another look at Lin Mu's appearance. 
She didn't think that Lin Mu was an important person who could sit in the VIP seats. Lin Mu smiled at them and greeted gently. Since it was his first time boarding an airplane, Lin Mu fiddled with every object around him as he felt very curious. Luo Bing Yun continued to watch the man's movements with a cynical look and thought that Lin Mu looked very hick. Noticing Luo Bing Yun, who seemed unhappy with Lin Mu's presence, the bodyguard took the initiative to speak to the airline directly to move Lin Mu's seat. But the woman replied curtly while folding her arms across her chest if her bodyguard didn't need to do that. Because according to her, compared to other VIPs, Lin Mu's figure is quite interesting. After several hours of airplane takeoff, they finally landed at their destination. Lin Mu got off first, then behind him, followed by the entourage of the woman named Luo Bing Yun with bodyguards. The woman looked at Lin Mu's back in front of her and was surprised that he left without saying anything to her. This was the first time someone had ignored her existence. Luo Bing Yun smiled as she became more and more interested due to her curiosity about Lin Mu. In a large, grand theater-like room, there was a man holding a box of spiritual ginseng. The auctioneer told him that the ginseng was a very special ginseng that was discovered by an herbalist and tested by a professional and that it had many benefits. Then the auction host began to open the price with $15,000. Lin Mu, who was sitting in one of the chairs, stared with a grin. He thought the person was very stupid for putting such a low price on such a valuable ginseng. Then, one by one, the audience in that place began to raise the nominal figures. Because he felt he had to get such a valuable item, Lin Mu finally started with a big number that beat the people who bid for it. Lin Mu set the price of the ginseng at $44,000. The host smiled broadly, and he did not expect to get such a large number. Because no one else dared to bid at a higher price than Lin Mu, finally the auction host knocked the hammer signaling that Lin Mu was the one who had the right to take the ginseng. Lin Mu walked into the hallway from that place carrying a box containing his coveted spiritual ginseng. He was smiling happily as he was finally able to bring home the precious ginseng. He thought to himself that the bronze cauldron should already be here when he returned. In a large hall, there were many important people in neat clothes sitting at a dinner party. There was a woman named Luo Bing Yun calling for a maid. Then she left a glass of wine with the maid because she was about to leave. Seeing that, the waitress asked him where he was going since the dinner wasn't over yet. Then, casually waving her hand to Miss Li, Luo Bing Yun said that she would go outside for a while to get some fresh air, and then she left the business of the event to her. After leaving the dinner, Luo Bing Yun got into her sports car, and she was happy to finally be free from her business. When she looked in the rearview mirror, Luo Bing Yun realized that she was being followed by bodyguards, which made her instantly feel annoyed. She knew that they were doing it to protect her, but Luo Bing Yun felt that having to be escorted by four special forces was too much for her. A faint smile appeared on her lips. The thought of escaping from the watchful eyes of the special guards crossed her mind. With great confidence, Luo Bing Yun stepped on the gas to make the speed of her car go very fast. Luo Bing Yun tried to seize the opportunity. Seeing this, the bodyguards who were following her panicked and told the man next to them to quickly follow Lady Luo Bing Yun's car and not be left behind. There was the sound of a very fast car engine and chasing each other. Luo Bing Yun did not stay still as the bodyguards were still chasing her. There was a one-way street ahead, so Luo Bing Yun drove fast until she reached the red light intersection, where she immediately slammed the steering wheel to the left. The special bodyguards could not follow Luo Bing Yun's car, and they lost track of her. Luo Bing Yun shouted with joy as she had managed to make the special guards lose their way. Finally, Luo Bing Yun really had her alone time. She looked in her rearview mirror to make sure that her bodyguards weren't following her anymore. She was suddenly very surprised to see a figure crossing the road in front of her car. At the same time, Luo Bing Yun hit the brake pedal with full force as she was very surprised by the sudden appearance of the figure. Unexpectedly, a bullet pierced the glass of Luo Bing Yun's car door right in front of her face and almost hit her. Realizing this, Luo Bing Yun immediately got out of her car and looked around the street. 
She wondered where the bullet came from. She guessed that it came from the person who was running just now. Fortunately, Luo Bing Yun had time to hit the brakes, because otherwise the bullet could have pierced her head. The woman gritted her teeth because she was annoyed with the person who dared to shoot bullets at her. Then the woman ran to a nearby building to hide first until the bodyguards came to rescue her. Luo Bing Yun ran very quickly to a small alley near the street. When she was far enough away, she stopped because she felt safe from the mysterious attacker who shot bullets at her. Then the woman heard the sound of someone's footsteps approaching her. Luo Bing Yun immediately looked in the direction of the source of the sound. But she thought that judging from the sound of his casual footsteps, the person was probably just a passerby. At the same time, Lin Mu appeared in front of the woman who was walking leisurely. Seeing that, Luo Bing Yun immediately remembered that he was the man she met on the airplane. Then Luo Bing Yun ran towards him and grabbed Lin Mu's hand instantly. When he saw the woman who suddenly grabbed his hand, Lin Mu thought that she was the lady of the night who was flirting with him, and then he smiled and rejected the woman. Luo Bing Yun's facial expression changed instantly. She was very surprised to get such treatment. Suddenly, Luo Bing Yun looked at the clothes she was wearing to make sure that she was not that kind of woman. Luo Bing Yun called out to Lin Mu, who was walking away from her. Lin Mu immediately turned around and asked the woman with a confused face if she needed anything else. Then Luo Bing Yun cleared up the misunderstanding, then said the truth if she was being chased by a murderer, so he asked Lin Mu to help her. Hearing that, Lin Mu sympathized and drove the woman to the police station because he felt that they were the right people to protect her. They both walked hand in hand to the police station, and during the journey, they did not say a single word, so the atmosphere felt very awkward. After a while, they finally arrived in front of the police station and Lin Mu invited her to enter, but the woman just stayed where she was. Realizing that, Lin Mu was a little annoyed and immediately looked at the woman, then asked what she really needed. Luo Bing Yun just looked down shyly as she asked Lin Mu if he really didn't realize who she was. Lin Mu felt that he did not recognize the woman's figure. He felt that he was being played by her, and then Lin Mu said goodbye and left Luo Bing Yun because he felt that it was a waste of time being there. Luo Bing Yun stared at Lin Mu's departure, and she really didn't expect that he really didn't recognize who she was. The woman couldn't believe that Lin Mu just left without even acknowledging her. Then instantly, Luo Bing Yun looked down, thinking that she couldn't report tonight's murderer attempt to the police because someone from her family would definitely take care of this. Then she looked over at Lin Mu, who had not gone far away from her. Then Luo Bing Yun called Lin Mu back to get his attention. The woman argued that she was very hungry, so she asked Lin Mu to buy her some food and promised to pay him later. Hearing that made Lin Mu feel sorry for her. Lin Mu finally agreed to help the woman and told her that after this, she should go back home or the police station because it was not good for women to walk around at this time of night. Then, Lin Mu and the woman walked in a luxurious residential complex where there were many high-rise houses there. Luo Bing Yun asked the man if there was a restaurant in the neighborhood. Lin Mu closed his eyes and tried to explain that he would bring Luo Bing Yun to his house because Lin Mu could cook food for her. Luo Bing Yun's facial expression showed a faint smile as she thought that Lin Mu was a very kind person. The two of them entered one of the luxurious houses in the housing complex. The woman looked around the corner of Lin Mu's house and then said that Lin Mu's taste in furniture was quite interesting. Once inside, Lin Mu invited the woman to sit on the living room sofa. Then Lin Mu immediately realized that the woman's legs looked very swollen. Without thinking, Lin Mu went straight to the back to get a bucket of warm water and put the woman's feet into the bucket. Luo Bing Yun was very surprised by the attention given by the man, then did not forget to thank Lin Mu. With a sweet smile, Luo Bing Yun introduced herself to Lin Mu. Likewise, Lin Mu introduced himself to the lady. Then Lin Mu told the woman to rest while he made some dishes for her. Luo Bing Yun looked warmly at Lin Mu with a smile, and in her mind thought that Lin Mu was a little ignorant, but very kind from his heart. Not long after, Lin Mu came in with a plate of food that he had made. Seeing the woman who kept looking at him, 
Lin Mu guessed that the woman was so hungry that she didn't stop staring at the food he brought. Feeling that she had been caught, the woman was shy and did not admit it. Lin Mu also gave the woman some slippers so that she could feel more comfortable. Luo Bingyun blushed because he got more attention from Lin Mu. Lin Mu and Luo Bingyun sat opposite each other in Lin Mu's all-white kitchen room. On the dining table were many dishes that Lin Mu had cooked. The man smiled broadly at Luo Bingyun while humbling himself that he only made a few simple dishes. Feeling very hungry, Luo Bingyun finally ate the man's cooking. After she tasted it, there was a happy expression on her face, and then the woman praised Lin Mu's skill. Besides looking good, the food also tasted very good to her. Hearing such praise from Luo Bing Yun made Lin Mu smile wryly and told her to eat more. While eating the food heartily, Luo Bing Yun asked Lin Mu if he really didn't remember her. Then Lin Mu thought hard to try to remember, but still he couldn't remember where they had met. Then instantly Luo Bing Yun gave Lin Mu a clue. He mentioned a flight to Nangu City. Hearing that clue, Lin Mu instantly realized that Luo Bing Yun was the woman he met on the plane along with her bodyguards. Luo Bing Yun's eyes lit up because she was happy that he finally remembered her, even though there was not much change in the woman. After that, Lin Mu asked why she was chased by assassins in the middle of the road. She looked away and tried to explain that it happened to her because of a business dispute, so she was used to underhanded tactics. Seeing Luo Bing Yun's facial expression turning sad, Lin Mu decided not to ask any more questions and then told the woman to finish her food because after that, Lin Mu would soon heal her leg. After finishing dinner, the two of them returned to the living room to heal Luo Bing Yun's leg. Lin Mu examined the woman's leg, then told the woman if he would take care of her bruises first. Lin Mu slowly massaged the bruised area on Luo Bing Yun's leg. The woman's face turned red from the pain. After massaging her leg for a while, Lin Mu said that it was a sprained wound, and then suggested that the wound should be treated immediately, because otherwise it would affect her walking. Lin Mu then took the initiative to help her heal the injury by pulling her ankle. It didn't take long for Lin Mu to cure Luo Bing Yun's leg. That made Luo Bing Yun feel relieved. She didn't feel any more pain after the treatment given by Lin Mu. The woman smiled happily, then asked if Lin Mu was a doctor. Then Lin Mu replied that he was still studying at the university. After that, Luo Bing Yun asked him for permission to borrow Lin Mu's bathroom because she felt he couldn't go home in such clothes. Lin Mu smiled sweetly at the woman, then told her to wait for a while he got his clean clothes to lend to Luo Bing Yun. Since Lin Mu lived alone, he didn't have any women's clothes, so Lin Mu gave his clothes for Luo Bing Yun to wear. Then, Luo Bing Yun immediately rushed to the bathroom to change her clothes. Lin Mu sat on the sofa chair in the living room staring at the box containing spiritual ginseng. The man began to think hard to figure out how to use this herbal medicine. At the same time, there was a knocking sound from behind the door of the living room. Then Luo Bing Yun walked into Lin Mu, who was in the room wearing Lin Mu's thigh-length short white clothes. Instantly, Lin Mu's face showed an expression of amazement, seeing the woman's beauty that perfectly matched his clothes. Then Luo Bing Yun approached and asked what was inside the box. Then Lin Mu replied that it was an herbal plant that he used to make medicine. Hearing this, Luo Bing Yun was immediately surprised and immediately asked why he ate the herbal medicine when he still looked young and looked healthy. Lin Mu closed his eyes and tried to explain that he had a very weak body since birth, so he had to live on herbal medicines. Luo Bing Yun looked sympathetically into Lin Mu's eyes and told him that she knew some very good doctors and suggested Lin Mu to go see them instead of taking bitter herbal medicines. The man then refused Luo Bing Yun's kindness by saying that his condition could only be relieved by Chinese medicine, which even Western doctors could not help. Since it was already late at night, Lin Mu suggested Luo Bing Yun to spend the night at his house because he thought it was not good for women to go home alone. It also happened that Lin Mu had a guest room in his house that Luo Bing Yun could use to spend the night there. Luo Bing Yun also agreed to that. Then the woman walked to the guest room, leaving Lin Mu alone in the room. The next day in the afternoon, as the sun began to set, Lin Mu had just returned home from his school. 
As he arrived at the entrance of his house, Lin Mu saw the slippers worn by Luo Bing Yun had been neatly arranged in front of the door, which made him realize that the woman had left this house. When walking into his house, Lin Mu smelled a delicious aroma from the direction of the kitchen. He immediately walked over there out of curiosity. Lin Mu saw that his table was full of many kinds of food. Then he saw a paper tucked under the plate. Without thinking, he immediately took the paper. It was a message written by Luo Bing Yun.